coming out. I'm sure there's other things you may have had to do tonight. But thanks for coming and to listen to Juan and myself. And my name is Shabak, Shabaka Sonyata Kualimi. Really, really, I almost got tongue tied on my own name. <laughs> you know, it's a name that translated to mean uncompromising teacher of truth. Uh, I am not going to uh, get down to real glory details of uh, life on death row. But what I would like to talk about is uh, some personal issue, how it affects me personally and how it affects my family, my mother, my sister, my children. My ordeal began in uh, 1973 in Tampa, Florida. I was charged with three crimes, robbery, rape, and murder. I protested my lack of knowledge of these crimes, but I was tried and I was convicted. I received a life sentence for the rape, a consecutive life sentence for the robbery, and I received death for the murder. My case was a very high publicized case. I was accused of robbing and raping and murdering the common law wife of a very prominent defense attorney named Fred Barstow. Fred Barstow was the type of lawyer that if you went to court on a speeding ticket or anything within this range, you go to Fred, Fred and paid all the lawyers. Fred had connection from the Hillsborough County Courthouse all the way to Tallahassee, Florida to the State Supreme Court. We started picking our jury on a Monday. We started receiving evidence and testimony on a Wednesday. Friday, 7.45 p.m., guilty verdict came back. This is a highly publicized case. Monday morning, the following Monday morning, I should say, I was sentenced to death. Wednesday, I was on death row, where I stayed for the next 14 and one half years of my life. You could say that Shabaka grew up <coughs> those 14 and one half years. I had no other choice. There were some sick folks trying to kill me. There were some sick folks saying that I was a monster. I had holes in my head and I needed to be destroyed. That I should not be amongst the civilized people. But as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, there are no homes coming out of my head, no ones. There's a lot of stuff happened during those 14 and a half years while I was on death row. Things that happened to me personally, things that happened to my family. I guess one of my greatest joy was that my mother was still alive when I walked out. That she got a chance to hold her son and to see that her prayers and her son's prayers were answered. That there is such a thing as faith. And when you look at me, and when you look at Warren, and you listen to us, then you can understand the scriptures, especially Hebrew chapter 11, because Warren and I are what faith can do. We come to you tonight asking you to join a large group of people Across this nation that's trying to repeal the death penalty. We have Lisa back there who is the executive director of Carl Radians Alternative to the Death Penalty. A lady that works alone with her helper, Chelsea. 
a lady that, if you look at her salary and you break it down, probably won't be minimum wage or just above. But she's trying to save life. She's trying to say, yes, all lives are sacred, not just some. I want to tell you a story about my brother. It took place September of 1979. He was my oldest brother, his name was Wooly. He needed, he was living in Lyons, Georgia, and he needed a kidney transplant. His doctors went to Charleston, South Carolina, where I'm originally from, to examine my siblings. They were not a match. They came to Stark, Florida, with after all, where I were. Perfect match. Mr. Louis Wainwright, who was then the director of the Department of Correction, said that I will not be allowed to go to Lowndes, Georgia, because it will be a security risk. Understandable. You don't want to take a person off a death row not knowing whether or not they are guilty or innocent. Send them way to another state and that person escapes and hurt another human being. Nobody want that on their conscience. So my brother responded to Mr. Renwright that they would transport Willie to Chance Teaching Hospital in Gainesville, Florida, located exactly 22 miles from Florida State Prison and death row. I want you to listen very carefully to this. Chance Teaching Hospital in 1979, as it is today in April 2011, was and is the hospital in which prisoners death row prisoners included, were taken when they became ill. Do y'all hear that? Do y'all have to repeat that? Once again, I was denied giving my brother one of my kidneys. And once again, security was used. That's the reason. Nine days later, ladies and gentlemen, my brother died because he couldn't find a kidney donor. I say the state of Florida killed my brother. I go even further in states that my death sentence was carried out on my brother. You see, there was no legal justification to deny me that second time. None whatsoever. I live and I walk among you knowing that my brother is not with me because I was somewhere where I had no right being, have done nothing to be there, and it cost him his life. 